Hi, welcome to this tutorial on using the commutative Poisson probability tables, which you'll find in any statistics textbook and also in statistical tables. Now we talked about this set of tables very briefly in the second tutorial, but what I want to do in this one is just take it a little further. In a few moments I'm going to show you how we can use the tables to calculate various probabilities and more importantly how we can use them in the kind of inverse sense where we're given a particular probability and we've got to work out the observed value x. But before we start let me just quickly go over what these tables are about in case you missed it in the second tutorial. Let's say this is a typical set of tables where if you've got x follows a Poisson distribution with a mean lambda, then the tables work out the probability that x is less than or equal to a given observed value x. Now the values of lambda, the mean, are normally written across the top. And in this particular set of tables you've got lambda goes from 0.5 all the way up to 5. And then there's another row down here which takes the values of lambda from 5.5 all the way up to 10. And lambda goes up in steps of 0.5. We've got our tabulated values of x down this column. Now then, what I want to do is just show you how we can use these tables. So because they're quite small here, I'm going to take a particular section of them and we'll do a few examples. Now here we have an excerpt from the tables. Remember the tables give us the probability that x is less than or equal to a particular value x. And I've taken the values of lambda going from 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 1 2 and values of x that go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and it would actually carry on. Anyway, we've got a section here from the tables. Now, just suppose you were given that x followed a Poisson distribution with mean 1.5. Remember, x could be the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. It would be an endless number of successes that you could have for x. So suppose we were asked to work out, for instance, the probability that x was less than 3. Remember the tables only work out the probability of less than or equal to a value. So if you wanted the values less than 3, you'd be looking at 0, 1 and 2. That is the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So I can now use the tables to work out this value. Just look for lambda equals 1.5 and look for an x value of 2. So we come down here, here's the x value of 2. Look under the column and where the row meet and we've got 0 0.8088. So that would be that probability 0 0.8088. Technically we should really round this up to say three decimal places to be sure that we're accurate. So this would be 0 0.8088 nine to three decimal places. Now we could use the tables to work out other probabilities. For instance, if we're asked to work out, say, the probability that x was more than one, using the tables, we know that being more than one would be two, three, four, five, and so on. What we need to do is the converse, that is to work out 1 minus the probability of being less than or equal to 1. 1 because that's the sum of all the probabilities, minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. And again, from tables, we could just look this up and you'd find that you get in the same way being less than or equal to 1 is just going to be equal to that value in there. So that would be 1 minus 0 0.5578 and that would give 0 
0.22, which when rounded to say three decimal places would be 0 0.442 to three decimal places. You can also use the tables to work out the probability that x equals a particular number, let's say 4. What you can do for that is to say that this is the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to 4, minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. And if you look up those two values in the tables, you'll have less than or equal to 4 is 0.9814 and less than or equal to 3 is 0.9344 and if you subtract those two values away from one another what you get is 0.0470 and to three decimal places that's going to be 0.047 to three decimal places. So that's very quickly how you can use the tables to work out various probabilities. Now I did say that we can use the tables to work out values of x. Now in this example we've got a shop sells a particular TV at a mean rate of 5 per day. And assuming that the number sold per day follows a Poisson distribution, find the smallest number of TVs that must be in stock at the beginning of the day in order to have at least a 99% chance of being able to meet all demands during that day. Well first of all what I need to do is to define a random variable x which will be the number of TVs sold per day. So if we just define that, let x be the random variable number of TVs sold per day, we've got that x follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 5. Now the question is asking us to work out or to basically find the probability that x is less than or equal to a given value of x. That is the probability that the number of TVs sold in a day being less than or equal to a given value x has to be at least 99%. That is greater than 0.99. Now to work out a question like this requires the use of a set of tables. And what we've got here is that x follows a Poisson distribution with a mean of 5. So in other words I'm looking along here for lambda equals 5 which is up here. And I've got my observed values x going down this column here. So what I've got to look for is a value of x which gives a probability of more than 0.99. So if I look down here you can see that as we come down here we've got when x is 7 we've got a probability of 0.86666. When we've got 8 it's 0.9319 and so on. And I'm looking down here till I find a value that exceeds 0.99 and the first one that I see is here this one here it's saying 0.9945 the one before it was 0.9863 so I get 0.9945 when I'm looking at the probability of x being less than or equal to 11 alright so in other words, the least value, let's just put this down here, the least value of x must equal 11. If we took 12, which I don't know if you can see it, is 0 0.9980, that is greater than 0 0.99, but we want the least value, so we want to take x to be 11. And so this is a typical example where you can use the tables in reverse if you like to find your observed value x. Well I hope you've been able to follow this example and how we can use the commutative Poisson binomial tables and uh, that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.